without the Black Panther, Wakanda will fall. Vibranium is covered in it. That can't be good. Without saying a word, it hurt. I regret not being there with all of you. It was not easy. He was king and Black Panther to everyone, but to me. We are transformed in a way through this experience. All of us very much believe that this feels like the most important movie we've ever made. That is what every crew member focused on every day, and none more so than Ryan Coogler at the helm of it all. Ryan is such a big heart and such a great storyteller. The actors that he's brought together were filled with emotion and passion. Reuniting with Ryan Coogler, it was incredible. His heart is really pure, and we should protect him at all costs. <laughs> Ryan is an artist. He has the heart to listen to you, to look in your eyes and go deep, not just in the story, but in your soul. When you get down to what makes this movie human, that is where Ryan really excels. I think even in a world as fantastical and as magical and as exciting as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he just has an understanding of people. Now is our time. It was an embracing of culture. And Ryan is going a step further. And we're remembering, we're restoring, we're celebrating. Above all, it is a relationship movie. We'll have some incredible set pieces. But at the end of the day, I think what people are going to really remember is the conversations. How do you move forward after losing someone that meant so much to you? You have to continue the legacy. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my new Black Panther video. Marvel just dropped a bunch of new footage, so we'll break it down. We also found out what Marvel's plans for the new Black Panther Shuri in Wakanda are going forward in Marvel Phase 5 after the events of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie. And it has a lot to do with some very familiar plots that they set up during Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So I'll explain everything. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll be posting my Black Panther review tomorrow, so look out for that. We're also doing a movie ticket giveaway for IMAX tickets. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post all your favorite moments from the trailers so far. Starting with all the Thunderbolts, the Red Hulk, Thunderbolt Ross, all the Val stuff that they're setting up in Marvel Phase 5, because we know that the Thunderbolts movie is coming right after Captain America 4, New World Order, and the Thunderbolts movie will be the last Marvel Phase 5 movie, in the same way that Black Panther Wakanda Forever is the last Marvel Phase 4 movie. The other big change after Avengers Endgame is that they're not ending each phase with an Avengers movie, they're ending a saga with both Avengers movies, Avengers 5, King Dynasty, and Avengers 6, Secret Wars. And what they're doing instead is just having really big movies, like really big ones, as the end cappers for each of the phases. Which means that the events of Thunderbolts is actually going to be a really big deal. And for the most part, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is all about Wakanda versus Namor and the MCU version of Atlanteans, which they're calling Talokan. But it's basically that conflict from the comics, like two different nations going to war with each other. Before T'Challa's death, it was going to be two kings going to war with each other, but now obviously Shuri is taking over as Black Panther, and a lot of the movie is them scrambling, trying to figure out how to move forward after T'Challa's death, like what do we do now? Also dealing with the events of the snap. 
Ryan Coogler actually said that before Chadwick Boseman passed away, he had finished the script for the original version of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The plot was going to be completely different because obviously he was going to be the main character. But like right after he finished the script is when he passed away. So he didn't have a chance to actually read the script. And once he did pass away, obviously they had to decide what to do next. And then they completely reworked the movie around that. A lot of the movie is them dealing with the grief of losing T'Challa and trying to figure out how to go next as a nation. While they're having all these problems with Namor over the idea of Vibranium, the whole idea is that the rest of the world now has learned about Wakanda's resources, all the Vibranium technology that they have, and they want it. So a lot of what's happening in the movie is the direct result of what Black Panther did or T'Challa did at the end of the first Black Panther movie, sort of revealing themselves, opening their borders, so to speak, kind of, at the end of the first movie to the United Nations. And because Wakanda is so well defended, like people can't just walk into Wakanda and take their vibranium. The rest of the world has started scouring the planet for other sources of vibranium now that they know that there's potentially more out there. That's eventually what leads them to finding Namor's people in Talokan underneath the waves looking for underwater vibranium. Thus the conflict with Namor, because it sounds like Namor blames a lot of what happened on what Wakanda did. Like you revealed all this to the world and now they're coming for us as well. We're threatened because of this. And now we found out what Val and Thunderbolt Ross are doing in the MCU while these events are playing out because obviously they have their own plans too. Everyone playing the Agatha All Along music, it was Thunderbolt Ross all along. If you didn't see the news, they've officially recast the role of Thunderbolt Ross and it's going to be Harrison Ford in the MCU. He's going to be Thunderbolt Ross inside Captain America 4 New World Order and probably also during the Thunderbolts movie. But like he's Thunderbolt Ross going forward now. It's not a big multiverse twist or anything like that. It's just like the first Iron Man movie and the second Iron Man movie with them recasting Rhodey. There's obviously a lot of reasons why they recast him because they really want to use Thunderbolt Ross in a lot of these plots going forward. And now we've learned that it has a lot to do with Vibranium in Wakanda. So we're talking after the events of Black Panther Wakanda Forever going forward in Marvel Phase 5. Like there's this whole new paradigm. They call Captain America 4 New World Order. It sounds like a lot of that plot is meant to address what's happening with the Black Panther plot and Vibranium going forward in the MCU. Heading into Marvel Phase 6 and Secret Wars. Everybody wants that sweet, sweet vibranium, and there's only a couple places to get it on planet Earth. So if you remember the way that Captain America's Civil War used the Black Panther character, it was all about the death of his father T'Chaka and him seeking revenge until he learned that something larger was at play. It was Baron Zemo manipulating him this whole time. This time it seems like their plans for including the Black Panther character, now the Shuri version of Black Panther, new Black Panther, in Captain America 4 and Wakanda in a larger way, is through this vibranium Thunderbolt Ross and Val plot. I don't know how much of the plot that that's going to cover because obviously there's going to be a couple other things going on during the movie. There's still lots of questions about how they're going to pay off the World War Hulk and the Scar Planet Hulk teaser at the end of the She-Hulk series. That might wind up being something much bigger later on, like they might push that off to even further in the future. Marvel still has some legal issues in releasing a new Hulk solo movie. I think they're still working that out. But it sounds like the reason why Val was in all those post credit scenes slowly assembling a Thunderbolts team is because they want to use them to get Vibranium from Wakanda by force if necessary. And that was the real reason why she was telling US Agent we're going to have some work for you that we can't necessarily call Captain America for. Like things that he won't be able to do because obviously the Falcon version of Captain America isn't going to go against Wakanda and Black Panther and try to get Vibranium from them by force. So it almost sounds like they're giving some of that Doom War, Doctor Doom plot in the comics to Thunderbolt, Ross, and Val. And that'll just play out during Captain America 4 and then the Thunderbolts movie. It sounds like it's just part of Marvel's larger plans to make Wakanda a much more important place in the future movies. Like, what do people want with Wakanda in the future? Like, obviously they have really cool technology and they're a really cool place to hide out in a big planetary invasion like Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. But I think it's them just logically taking things to the next step. Like, okay, Black Panther goes to the United Nations, reveals Wakanda, their resources, their technology to the rest of the world. Obviously, the other nations and the other villains in the MCU are going to want a piece of that. And now we're just starting to see that play out. And it's just starting during Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Like, there's hints of it. And it says that this big conflict between Namor and Wakanda. But really, the elephant in the room is people like Thunderbolt Ross, people like Doctor Doom, who want vibranium for themselves. And one of the bigger problems with characters like Thunderbolt Ross, obviously going to be their Red Hulk eventually too, got to worry about that, is that even though he's doing all these shady things, they're all sanctioned by the U.S. military, the U.S. government, because for a while he was Secretary of Defense inside the presidency, and then he was also Director of the World Security Council, which is the worldwide organization that developed after Thanos' attack during the first Avengers movie with the Shatauri. 
So it's basically Thunderbolt Ross doing what Iron Man was talking about doing during Avengers Age of Ultron, covering the world in a suit of armor, but doing it his way. He wants to cover the world in a suit of vibranium. Fun fact too, Riri Williams' Ironheart Mark II suit that you see in all the trailers is a vibranium suit. But it just sounds like that's why Thunderbolt Ross is such an important character to Marvel going forward. Like, yes, they want to do all the Red Hulk stuff, and that's going to be really cool. But really, they're setting him up as a much bigger antagonist heading into Captain America 4 and then the Thunderbolts movie. My early theory right now is that obviously he won't totally be successful, and that's why they'll use the Thunderbolts during the Thunderbolts movie. Like, okay, I can't do this on the official channels. We're going to use Black Ops methods. Val, call your Thunderbolts characters that you assembled, and we'll send them to get Vibranium for us. But post all your theories in the comments below. If Thunderbolt Ross and Val are trying to use their resources to get Vibranium, how do you think they're going to do it and which movies do you think that's going to play out in during Marvel Phase 5? My Black Panther Wakanda Forever review will post tomorrow, so look out for that. My full post credit scene video, Easter Eggs Breakdown for the entire movie, will post at the end of this week after it actually comes out, so be sure to go see it as soon as possible, and I'll name a giveaway winner in my review video tomorrow. Everyone click here for my new Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse video and click here for that new Thunderbolts teaser that they released at D23. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.